It is now time to discuss decomposition in Rn. And we'll actually spend more time talking about decomposition in Rn than we did in other vector spaces. Why? Very simple. We will soon discover that solving a system of linear equations is actually equivalent to solving a decomposition problem in Rn. So that's why. And I would also like to know that we're once again dealing with a vector space that's entirely unlike other vector spaces for which we consider decomposition so far, that is geometric vectors and polynomials. Yet once again, the concept of decomposition applies equally well to Rn, our new vector space, as it did to geometric vectors and polynomials and, of course, all other vector spaces. And when written in this form, it looks exactly the same. But once again, even though it looks exactly the same, it'll feel quite different. When we were talking about geometric vectors, we were using our geometric imagination. Then, when we switched to polynomials, we started using the analytical part of our brain. Now we're going to rely on first-grade arithmetic. Isn't that interesting? It just goes to show how broad the applications of linear algebra are. So now having made these important points, let's solve these simple decomposition problems. And they're very simple indeed. And what makes them particularly simple? Well, of course, it's the choice of these vectors A, B, and C. These vectors are such that this is probably the simplest decomposition problem that one can possibly think of. This decomposition will be so easy that in other situations when we're faced with much more complicated decomposition problems in Rn, we'll find a way to convert them to other decomposition problems where we're doing decomposition with respect to these three very special vectors. So we'll be looking for these vectors throughout the course even when they're not there. When they're not there, we'll create them. So get used to them. They are your friends. They're 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, and 0, 0, 1. And it's very easy to imagine what would be the analogs in R2. We'll just have 1, 0, 0, 1, and more generally, Rn. And here's what makes decomposition so easy. It's actually so simple it's hard to explain. So let's just go ahead and do it. So when we decompose the vector 3, 5, 6 with respect to these very special vectors a, b, and c, we clearly need 3 of a, 5 of b, and 6 of c. Let me write it in. 3 of a, 5 of b, and 6 of c. And all I can say is that it's easy to see. And it is indeed easy to see if you're good at linear combinations. Once again, you have to be very good at the forward problem to do the inverse problem. You have to be good at addition to do subtraction. You have to be good at multiplication to do division. And you have to be pretty good at linear combinations to do decomposition. And if you are pretty good at linear combinations, then it's just very easy to see that these coefficients are correct. Because the only way to get this 3 is to take 3 of a, the only way to get this 5 is to take 5 of b, and the only way to get this 6 is to take 6 of c. That's how simple these vectors are. Let's do the second problem, and of course you should pause the video and do it on your own, and then come back and make sure that, of course, you did it right. But the coefficients here, by similar logic, are 8, negative 11, and 17. And there you go. We're now finished with our first set of decomposition problems in Rn. In the next video, we'll do another set of decomposition problems, but with respect to a slightly more complicated set of vectors a, b, and c. We will use a bootstrapping set of vectors, where the coefficients are very difficult to determine all at once, but one of the coefficients is obvious, and then having determined one of them, the next one becomes obvious, and then the next one becomes obvious. So that's in the next video, but in this video we just wanted to get started with decomposition in Rn and to highlight the similarities and the differences 
between decomposition in Rn and other vector spaces.